October 31st, we all know it is Halloween, but this day marks two major revolutions. Martin Luther's 95 Theses and Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin white paper. Over 500 years ago, Luther challenged the Catholic Church, sparking a shift that changed the world. Fast forward to 2008, and Satoshi quietly dropped a nine page document that would revolutionize finance. Is October 31st just a coincidence? Or is it the date of revolution by design? Stick around to the end of this video to see what connects these two world shaking events. Let's get it. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> Welcome to BitBoy X. I'm your host, the BitBoy. If you're into crypto and how it's shaking up the financial system, just like the Reformation shook up society in the age of enlightenment, then make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that noti bell so you don't ever miss a thing. All right, let's go back to 1517. Picture this. The Catholic Church is basically the bank, government, and gatekeeper of salvation. And then Martin Luther, a German monk, has had enough. He's fed up with the indulgences, essentially, paying to reduce punishment for sins. So on October 31st, 1517, Luther nails his 95 theses to the church door in Wittenberg. This wasn't just a complaint. It was a call to decentralized power, putting faith back into the hands of the people. Sound familiar? Now jump on to October 31st, 2008. The world is in a financial crisis. Banks are being bailed out while regular people are paying the price. And just then, Satoshi Nakamoto publishes the Bitcoin white paper, a blueprint for a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system. No banks, no middlemen, just people transacting directly. Like Luther, Satoshi was challenging a corrupt centralized system and offering a new vision. Let's break down the parallels. First, both events are about decentralizing power. In Luther's time, the church had the ultimate authority. It decided what was right, what was wrong, and how people could buy their way to salvation. Luther's 95 Theses attacked that control. He argued that individuals should have direct access to faith without needing a middleman. Bitcoin does the same for money, giving people financial freedom, without banks acting as intermediaries. With Bitcoin, there's no central authority controlling the supply, the rules, or access. Just like Luther handed religious power back to the people, Satoshi gave financial power back to individuals. You don't need a bank's blessing to hold Bitcoin. It's yours. No permission needed. Second, both revolutions use technology to spread their message. For Luther, it was the printing press, which allowed his ideas to reach beyond Wittenberg. Those 95 theses were copied and spread like wildfire. For Bitcoin, it's the internet. Satoshi's white paper and Bitcoin code are accessible worldwide, instantly available to anyone with an internet connection. Whether it's 1517 or 2008, the message of reformation charges ahead. And just like Luther faced resistance from the church, Bitcoin faced resistance from the financial giants of today. And then there's one which does nothing. I call it the pet rock the Bitcoin or something like that. On the Bitcoin, you know, there's, first of all, and I'm, I'm not trying to make a joke here. There are use cases, AML, fraud, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, sex trafficking. Those are real use cases. And you see it being used for hundreds, maybe 50, hundred billion dollars a year for that. That is the end use case. Everything else is people train among themselves. I defend your right to do Bitcoin. You know, it's okay. okay. I don't want to tell you what to do. So my personal advice is be don't get involved. Banks, governments, they call it risky, volatile, and a tool for criminals. All to keep people away from a system that challenges their authority. But just like the Reformation, this revolution is unstoppable. Once people see an alternative, it's hard to go back. Here's where it gets really interesting. Just as the Reformation didn't change religion, but spark societal shifts in education, governance, and economics, Bitcoin's impact goes beyond finance. Crypto is fueling decentralized finance, privacy, and the ability to transfer value across borders with no middleman. Luther's reformation led to freedoms we still enjoy. Bitcoin is paving the way for a new kind of financial independence. Both events show that when people have access to revolutionary ideas, they can take on the most powerful institutions of their time. Luther's 95 Theses transformed Europe, breaking the church's control over people's spiritual lives. Satoshi's Bitcoin white paper, it's doing the same thing for financial lives, challenging our very concept of money and banking. So is it a coincidence that Satoshi dropped the white paper on Reformation Day? 
Maybe, but maybe it's a tribute, a nod to everyone who ever said enough is enough. Luther redefined Christianity, Satoshi is redefining finance. October 31st isn't just for costumes and candy, it's the date of revolutions. Are you ready for a spooky take though? Just like Protestantism in the 20th and 21st century has come back under the control of man-made religious structure. Bitcoin has been to some measure hijacked by the powers that be. They want to corral it and use it to usher in an era of tokenized assets on their terms. What do you think? Was Satoshi inspired by Luther? Or is all this just a coincidence? Has Bitcoin been hijacked like a religion? Drop your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you're taking a stand for financial reformation, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more game-changing insights. The reformation took centuries to reshape the world, but in the digital age, change happens fast. We're witnessing history and you're part of it. That's all I've got, be blessed, BitBoy out.